This video shows the first three months after I woke up from coma. Uh, the three months in Vegas. The whole reason why I'm recording this, this video is because when, when I try to talk to people and they see how I recovered so much, usually the first thing they think about is this guy's stroke wasn't that bad. That's why he recovered. That's all they're thinking about. But uh, if they did any research, if they looked at any of my videos, they would have known my stroke was probably one of the worst ones in the whole stroke group of 50,000 people. My, my stroke left me paralyzed in both arms, both legs, and both hands complete paralysis now if you've been in a stroke group for a while you probably think I'm making it up because all you've heard about is stroke affects one side most cases that's true why my, my stroke was both sides was because I had a cat category 5 hemorrhage and the damage was so category 5 is the most severe the damage was so severe and it's deep inside the brain. The only thing they could do was just cut out that section that, that ruptured and just reconnect the, the, the undamaged uh, blood vessel. And the part, they, the part they removed just happened to be the part that controls movement. That's why I was paralyzed on both sides, complete paralysis. But the weird thing is, what happened was a blessing in disguise, a total blessing in disguise. Because I was so messed up on both sides, I had more mo motivation than most. You know, because I was 41 and I was about to become a quadriplegic. And my personality is so stubborn. I, I kept on telling myself, there is no way in hell I'm going to die a quadriplegic. So I, I forced I forced in a recovery. At the, at the first hospital, I couldn't do much. Uh, still on heavy painkillers and all kinds of drugs trying to heal. And um, yeah, so the first three months, I, actually in the first three weeks, I converted the negative into a positive in my head. And by doing that, I was completely fine. I wasn't depressed or anything. And as soon as I got to the second hospital, at, uh, on my third month, I, I went nuts <laughs> on trying to, trying to force a, a movement out of, out of my right hand, out of my right arm. Another thing with, with, with the people in the stroke group, because they're affected on one side, they have a choice, they have an option. If one hand doesn't work, they've got a good hand. Now, I didn't have a good hand, so I didn't have an option. You know, I had to succeed or I was going to die a quadriplegic. And... I, I just forced it until it moved. I did not quit. I did not give up. I just did it until it moved. And it moved. You know? And th I've been doing this for over eight years. When I have option, when I have choices, I find ways to, to get rid of that choice. Part 11 in, in my YouTube videos. Burn your bridges. I keep on finding bridges to burn. I keep on finding, you know, I keep on giving myself no option. When I do have an option, I'll find a way to make that option disappear. And that way I'll have to come out with, pull a rabbit out of the hat or, you know, suffer the consequences. So I kept on improving, you know. From, for someone that was completely paralyzed, both arms, both legs, and both hands. Ten and a half months later, I walked out of hospital, 
just last year, after seven years in a wheelchair, I retired my wheelchair for good. And, and seriously, one of the first things when I when I tried to talk to people, they see, hey, hey, this guy can move his hands. This guy can lift dumbbells. He mustn't be that bad. You know, if they bother to check my older videos, they'll see how bad I was. This is the whole point of this video. To let people know, hey, if someone that was messed up even worse than you can recover so much better, wouldn't you want to know what, how? You know? You know, people are not curious enough to know. And I tell them to watch the videos. But no one wants to watch it. It's boring. It's just me talking for 10 minutes. But sometimes that's what it takes. You know, if you don't want to learn from someone who, who did it already, then, you know, you don't have much of a chance. 